there is now the first vineyard as a service operating now in Israel. What does that mean? How does that work? And what more can we find out? Well, that's something we're going to explore on this 166th episode of The Jewish Shrinking Show, bringing L'chaim to life. L'chaim. Welcome to another episode of The Jewish Shrinking Show. I'm your host, Rabbi Drew Kaplan. I'm, well, I'm, we're here with first time guest of the show, Nadav Jesselson of, as you can see on a shirt, Anavav Vineyards. And we're here actually at Anava Vineyards in in Israel. So for those less familiar with you, Nadav, uh, what would you say about yourself? Started my career actually in education, went into business most of my career, and then searching for uh, meaning and fulfillment, I uh, found myself here. Uh, we bought uh, land in Nechusha, which is uh, not far from here. Mm-hmm. I'm a shot not far from here. And uh, Long story short, I worked in a family office, left the family office right before the corona. Corona started. I said, what am I doing? And I found myself here, yeah. wandering around the olive grove and, uh, and uh, talking a lot with friends in agriculture. A friend led to a friend. And then I got into uh, uh, basically vineyards, yeah. wine vineyards. And that's just, you know, enchanted me. It swooped me off of my... Uh, yeah. And I am uh, all into... Uh, uh, wine, vineyards, and Eretz uh, Yisrael, yeah. and nature. So that's that's uh, maybe uh-huh. in a nutshell. So when COVID happened, you knew you wanted to do something agricultural? Uh, I left the office in Rosh Hashanah before COVID. Oh, in 2019? A half a year I was in search. I uh, had no idea what I'm going to do. It wasn't a simple year, for, half a year for me. And then when COVID came, I was everybody suddenly was also at home. Yeah. And I went out. Uh-huh. I said, okay, I'm going out. We don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going out. Agriculture is always somewhere there behind in the back, in the back of my mind. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's mainly because I love being outside. Uh-huh. And I was working for 10, 12 years in Tel Aviv in the concrete jungle. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, I, was, I, was, I, I started also a tour guide course. So I'm oh, yeah. a, a, a certified tour guide. Uh, one of the most amazing things I did in my life. And again, it basically brought my passion of being outside and, and loving this land. Mm-hmm. Because I got to know a lot of it. This Eretz Yisrael is, you know, infinite. It is and so f- to know about it. Yeah. And uh, but I got to know a lot. Toured the, all the country, also where we are now. Um, that was the first thing that led me outside. Yeah. So that's half a year. Uh, basically, was you know something I guess I guess I had to go through. It wasn't a simple year. Um, half a year, and uh, and that's it. I, I, like I said, I was talking to friends, trying to see what I can grow. I thought about the olives. I understood that the olive industry was back then. Today it's coming back a little, but back then it was in a terrible uh, uh, situation. People were uprooting uh, uh, olive groves all over. Wow. Actually, we were thinking of doing that here too. But I said that I'm not starting my uh, agriculture experience in Eretz Israel by uprooting an olive grove. It just didn't <laughs> seem right. Yeah. And I said, something's going to be here in the olive grove. I don't know what. And uh, and today we know, number one, uh, this is... Well, off camera, what they don't see is that there's a bunch of olive trees over here. You see a little, I think, right behind yeah, us, yeah. these trees. Uh-huh. But there is uh, about 330 trees, olive trees here that we are um, uh, renewing now. Because they, when we came here, they were in a terrible uh, uh, situation, condition. Yeah. condition. Mm-hmm. So what we do today in the olive groves, the, the, the purpose of the olive grove is the number one for us. Mm-hmm to sit here. Yeah. Number two, which is uh, very important, is that uh, Anava Vineyard believes very much in education. Also, I was in education. So yeah. any volunteer group that comes, if we have what to do in the Olive Grove, we'll take it to the Olive Grove. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, number two. Number three yeah. is we're going to make, uh, hopefully already this year, it's going to be our first, uh, what's called in Hebrew, Mesik, growing that are special for Eretz Yisrael. So everyone has a different word for the harvest, for different products. Yeah. With the wine, yeah. it's Batsir. Mm-hmm. With the olives, it's Mesik. That's uh, the olive grove that I started with. And like I said, I was discussing with people, uh, what should I grow? I understood the olive grove, the olives aren't relevant. Search for what to grow, yeah. Baruch Hashem. And, uh, in a, in so you a, stumbled upon the wine. It, it wasn't obvious at the outset you were going to grow grapes. It was, you you so started with olive groves. People ask me, was this your dream? Uh-huh. I said, no, uh-huh. but I am living a dream now. You know, it's, 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 the, it's the opposite that happened with me. I didn't have a dream and went to fulfill it. I'm fulfilling something, yeah. and now I'm dreaming it. Uh-huh. 
כאילו זה מה שהיינו כחולמים כזה, זה ממש. I'm walking around here, it's unbelievable, we're sitting here, it's a dream. It's almost like a Nas 7 Ishmael, like you first started doing and then you later understood. Exactly, now I'm understanding the zchut and the love that I'm just having more and more for this. So now that we have a sense of you and your background, Perfect. What about Anava Vineyard? So how did you, what is it and how did you come up with this idea? Right. And also what makes it special and unique? So all your questions excite me already. Oh, nice. oh, great. So when we started, basically the, the one, uh, the person who gave me the most uh, uh, courage to do the vineyards yeah. was a few people, actually, uh, or Seinfeld, whatever, yeah. were a few people. It'll be entertaining. One of them was a friend of mine, uh, Vital Shacha from Amatsia. He's, uh, an agri- he's in agriculture for years and he, he really pushed me to it. Uh, another one, there were a few, so I'm not dropping names now, so if anybody I forget, don't forgive me. The other one is uh, Dror Dotan from uh, Carmel Winery. He used to be, just left, he used to be their uh, agriculture, uh, head of agriculture. I was talking to them, he, he gave me a lot of information. That's, by the way, one of the most amazing things in this industry. Nobody's holding back. Everybody's just willing to oh, give you sharing. information, sharing, yeah. and, and everybody wants you to succeed. It's wow. amazing. So the other time, it was my, one of my first people who I met uh, in the industry and uh, discussing, and, and I, eventually I told him, hold on, would you guys want me to plant a vineyard for you? Mm. And he said, yes. Mm. And that's it. After a half a year or a year, I planted 50 dunam this for was Carmel what? Winery. This was 2021. For, oh, mm. so this wasn't in 2020. This, this is... was t- the summer of 2021, right before Shemitah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it took me a while to, yeah. to understand, to search, to discuss. Uh, but I was already all into that. The minute I understand I'm going to do a vineyard, I was all, all, all in. It's a good thing you got in right before Shemitah. Exactly. You'd exactly. Have to wait that, was, yeah. that was also the main purpose, to get Shemitah in Ola in the same year also. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and again, the experience of Shemitah as a farmer yeah. is, is unbelievable. It's yeah. unbelievable. You know, we, what we did... If we just talk about Shemitah for a second, yeah. what we did is we did a Ter Mechira. Yeah. And the reason we did a Ter Mechira, even though we had no fruit, and even if we'd have fruit, it's Ola, yeah. is because, because there are certain uh, uh, um, activities in the vineyard you cannot do even if it's a Ter Mechira. Ah, so like trimming. Exactly. Uh-huh. Why? Because the Torah, it says, Kar Mechalo Tizmo. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. All of the Halachot of Shemitah, again, that, that's what connects me so strongly to the vineyard to understand that yeah. Almost all the agriculture is coming from here, from the vineyard. Yeah. So Kar Michal Otizmo teaches you all the rest of the halachot of Shemitah, from the Kerem. Ah. It says Kar Michal Otizmo is Sadchal Otikzo. They learn it from the Kramim? Yeah. Oh, wow. But Torah, that's what it wow. says. It doesn't say about the vegetables, or it doesn't say about uh-huh. the, the dates and the figs. It says Kar Michal Otizmo, Sadchal Otikzo and Kar Michal Otizmo. It's not in, it doesn't talk about Sadeh in that same area? Sadeh. Uh-huh. You got the wheat. Yeah. And the kerim. Uh, not tiktso, other trees. Sira is uh-huh. the harvest of the right. wheat, right? Yeah. And the vineyard is Yeah. And Zmira is the pruning, yeah. right? And basically, so there was a whole discussion with Machon uh, Torah Ve'aretz and with Dro from Carmel. Yeah. Are, is this considered Zmira? Because the, the, the vines were really small. Yeah. But what do you do in the first year? You're, you're designing them. So you're cutting down the different branches in yeah. order to create a main trunk. Huh. Right, because that's what's also amazing in the vineyard. You are a, you are like an artist. You're designing it the way you want it to be. Huh. So there's also, like I said, we believe strongly in education. Education and and ki adam sadeh and education uh, and the adam burn, comes yeah. together all the time here. Uh-huh. When our workers work here, we tell them when you're building a trunk, you are building your core uh, a spine. <laughs> I tell them you got to think about that and now go work. Uh-huh. And I really believe that it's. Uh, you know, it, it, it uh, nourishes each other. So what we did, we had to work with Palestinians. Even though we did a Ter Mechira, yeah. we could, Jews could not come and do the Zmira, even though it wasn't for sure Zmira, <laughs> but we brought the Palestinians to do that. By the way, that was uh, almost the last time we worked with the Palestinians. Yeah. Um, um, so that was 2021. Right. And then in 2022, well, that was definitely... Uh, for most of 2022, that was Shemitah. I remember walking around the vineyard with my clippers. Yeah. And I can't, I can't pull them out. Uh-huh. Because you can't cut the, yeah. if you see anything that needs to cut, you can't. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not it's even amazing. In, what about spring and summer 2022? You didn't have them work it? Or just so, so since then, yeah. uh, I ha- the main workers here were the sh- I, uh, uh, youth. Uh-huh. Jewish youth. Yeah. We had the Shomer Chadash. I don't know if you're familiar. It's an organization of uh, 
guys after high school before army so they they did a uh, 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 work for us yeah. amazing and i also taught there uh, cool. today um like in a little break there but i used to teach their tanakh and okay. they come work here oh, wow. so it was amazing yeah. uh this year our workers yeah. we had a team of girls uh -huh. from gush etzion uh -huh. in a school called regavim an amazing project that i wish what existed when i was in high school yeah what they do is they work half a day mm -hmm. and then the other half they learn that's so they're here girls ninth grade till uh 11th and next year 12th because mm -hmm. uh, it's a new school and uh they're gonna they're here at six in the morning work until Whew. 11 and they <laughs> oh, go wow. and we were, we were the only uh, uh farmer or, or or farmers that that had an, uh, um, a permanent team so we, we basically built a team with them. Oh, yeah. So it's really like a class that we have here. <laughs> and they came here, and we, at the end of the year, we had like a little party. So it was, wow. it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. The, they were our workers. Um, yeah. Okay, we, we, we shifted a yeah. little. I'm going back to Anava. Yeah. Um, so my first project was really, our first project was uh, Carmel Wineries. So we have 30, 50 dunam here, 20 of Cabernet Sauvignon, and 30 of Petit Syrah. Mm -hmm doing uh and selling the grapes to carmel and uh like i told you before this year is a very exciting year for us it's our first year i feel like i'm about to give birth for the first time yeah <laughs> i see the babies on the tree it's and, a multi-year gestation but yeah which means uh ubar uh ubar, ubar. right yeah, yeah. right the, right the gestation yeah. right so um so uh, uh this is our fourth year first year we're selling the grapes to carmel winery we're gonna take uh, a few tons to produce our own wine, so it's also exciting. Yeah. First year of Anava of winery making wine, um, and and basically, so when when I finished planting the fifty dunam, I remember yeah. I was standing about over there towards the end. Yeah, we finished planting. I picked up my head and I saw eleven thousand saplings starting to dig into the ground, and and take and, root. and this sounds crazy. Yeah. Take what? Take root. Take root. Exactly. Yeah. Take root. Dig yeah. in. Yeah. Connecting. And yeah. I was standing, and this could sound crazy, but I was—I felt the ground shaking, <laughs> in excitement. Yeah. Because uh, the 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 experience of planting a vineyard and 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 looking around you and everything is starting to grow and to nourish. It's like a bria chadasha. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a new creation. Unbelievable new yeah. creation. Yeah. And. At that point, uh, 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 something hit the back of my mind and said, I want to share this. Mm -hmm. I want to share this ex unbelievable experience. Yeah. But then as I was thinking about it, I said, nobody's crazy enough to have his vineyard. Why would you think that anybody want, would want a vineyard? Mm -hmm. So, put that aside. A few months afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, my brother, uh, who I worked with in the office yes. and uh, who I admire, Micha, and uh, he told me, he, he was at, in Argentina at a friend's bir a party, a uh, birthday party, and he sent me a picture of a map with different colors on the map, and then a list, every color had a name. And he sent me the picture and he said, listen, you gotta do this. Basically, he was at a place called uh, The Vines okay. that uh, sells a vineyard to people. Hmm. It sells hectares to, I don't know how much, but you know, very, very uh, high, uh, uh, very, very expensive for very, very, very rich people. Hmm. Uh, there's also a spa in the vineyard there and, uh, and a hotel. A spa. Exactly. Oh, so I'm telling you this because that's in Argentina. You can do that. In Israel, it's much more complicated. <laughs> uh, so, so we don't have, uh, you can't build anything here, basically. Um, and, and the minute he, he sent that, I started talking to my wife about it. And uh, my wife was, uh, in, uh, she's a UX expert, which is a high-tech uh, user experience. Mm. That's what she was doing back then. And uh, I convinced her to, to join me. Let's, let's, let's create something together. Mm. Uh, and uh, and uh, slowly but surely, we, 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 we actually, I saw that you had uh, uh, one of the first people we, we, we advised with. Yeah. Uh, uh, was Yossi Horowitz your last oh, right? Yeah, your last yeah. one the last one one of the reasons yeah yeah last one yeah uh, so so he helped us a lot in, in, in you know understanding what we should do and how we should do it mm. um, um, and uh, it took uh, it took time we had all the shmita to think about it right <laughs> hey there I wanted to break in I hope you're enjoying this episode so far if you like hearing about vineyards and wineries in Israel well, here's a sneak peek into next week's episode featuring Amachai Lori of 
Shiloh Winery, a place where we were stationed for 369 years. This is where the Mishkan was. We're talking about mm. before Yerushalayim, before King David uh, was here in Shiloh. Actually, mm. the archaeology site is right here nearby. Wow. I hope you enjoy that sneak peek into next week's episode, which I hope you come back and check out. We're now going to head back into this week's episode featuring Nadav Jesselson. So the, the idea up until this time, you were planning you were planning on selling grapes to wineries, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now this Correct. is where it's changing. Mine, I'll, now I'll, this is where it's changing. This is where it's changing. Yeah. I'll tell you another thing that caused me to change the con the, the conception. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, very good friend, he died from uh, Safari, not far from here, who also planted his vineyard when I planted. So I went to meet him to discuss yeah. who became Chavruta. <laughs> and it, it, amazing. Yeah. Um, so uh, he told me, he's a very wise guy, he's like a, a rab for me, yeah. uh, even though he's not religious. And that's what's so oh, amazing. Yeah. We learn Gemara and we bring our worlds together. Uh -huh. Amazing. Um, so he told me, kablan shel anavim. You are going to be a contractor, right? Kablan uh -huh. of, of grapes. Yeah. So I think that he knew exactly to understand that I'm looking for, for neshama, mm. for a story, not just to be selling grapes. Because my first uh, initial uh, thought was I'm going to do 300 dunam, not 50. Uh -huh. um, and then understand I want more connection and more sharing. Mm. I think that the two words just are going to they're, they're going to lead us throughout this whole interview are sharing okay. and connecting. That's okay. what Anava wants to do. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so then we started shifting. We started thinking about what we're doing. And uh, I'll give the, the end story because it's also an amazing experience of how we got to it. But... At the end of the day, together with uh, the winemaker that is, that is with us today, Eyal Drori, and together with Avinoa Minbar, mm. uh, which uh, Adam mentioned previously uh, that he was the viticulture of Castel yeah. for years, and today he's with us also. Uh, 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 he's, he's our Rebbe in growing the grapes. He's here <laughs> once a week. He's almost hands-on. Um, we basically created a product. I don't like to call it a product, but because it's just because it's so special, it can't be just called a product. Maybe a service. A, ser a service. You, you know what? You know what? It's uh, it's if we take uh, an example from the from the high tech world, there's yeah. a term called SaaS. Yeah. Software as a service. So yeah. it's a product that you get as a service. Yeah. So here we're giving same thing. Yeah. It's a vineyard as, as a, a service. service. Yeah. Vast. Yeah. Vineyard as a service. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, that, have you used that before? I've used it only with people who I know know high tech because yeah, but because vineyard some, as a service, I think that's a very just understandable concept. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then so people can parcel out. Yeah. Exactly. So what we're doing today, uh, at the end of this whole pro process that we've been through, we've planted last year three uh, uh, thirty dunam, mm -hmm. and we divided them purposely to small parcels mm -hmm. of a half a dunam each. Yeah. So it's 15 dunam, 30 parcels. Mm -hmm. And the way we planted it also, that's what's unique here. It isn't, it doesn't make sense agricultural, yeah, agriculturally, if you're, if you're thinking, because the main thought of any farmer around here is, is, uh, is uh, efficiency. Mm. Efficiency. That's that's where they make their money, uh -huh. uh, out of efficiency and out of uh, 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 you know uh, uh, probably also, cutting their costs. But probably also volume. Or you're saying more? It's more about efficiency. It is volume. It is volume, but it's more about efficiency uh -huh. and cutting your costs. Uh -huh. That is that's what I saw. You know, in my short experience, okay. that's the main thing I saw, and that's also why another reason why I shifted towards anava, uh -huh. because I want to do things not by always trying to to see where I could cut my costs. And anytime you cut your cost, it comes, it comes, you know, and uh, there's a price to it. And the vineyards are, are you're taking care of them less. Mm. If you take, if you bring less workers, if you don't do jobs that you say aren't, you know, so important. So I don't want to work like that. I want to work, you know, to the full extent of love that you can uh, take care of the, of the vineyard. Yeah. Um, so we planted 30 parcels, four different uh, 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 varieties. Mm -hmm. So anybody who comes can pick. Mm -hmm. I'll just give them quickly. We have 14 parcels of Cabernet Sauvignon, yeah. seven of uh, Shiraz, mm -hmm. five Malbec, mm -hmm. and four Petit Verdot. Huh. And out of that, they pick. Anybody who comes, he has to, the first thing he does uh, mm -hmm. after he signs the contract with us and, and joins basically to be a member of Anava, uh -huh. uh, he, together with Eyal, he, sometimes they know, our first... Uh, Buyer knew exactly what he wanted. He came and he said, I'm taking Shiraz. Huh. The minute huh. he knew the Shiraz, he knew what he wanted. 
Um, not sticking with boring Cabernet. Nope. I love Cabernet, but... Two guys took the Cabernet, yeah, and one took Shiraz. It's too popular not to take. Right, right. <laughs> That's why we planted also 14 Cabernet, because that yeah, is yeah. the most popular. Yeah. Um, is that most popular in Israel? I think, Adam, 70% yeah. of the vines in the world are Cabernet Sauvignon. In the world? Correct? So it's not just a Jewish or Israeli thing? No, because I'll tell you why. Because it's the strongest variety there is. Uh -huh. It is the toughest variety. You're saying all, the, the vines themselves are exactly. tough? They're, exactly. Uh, They're going to be okay. Heat, cold, they adjust, uh -huh. and they make good wine. Right. Uh, compared to the Consumer Petit Syrah, our yeah. biggest variety that we have here, which I love, yeah. uh, the Petit Syrah, it, it, growing it is more complex because uh, the clusters is is much uh, uh, a, a dense, dense, yeah, think, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, it's like a corn. It's like yeah, you know, yeah. really, really uh, yeah. dense. So it's it's harder to grow. That's uh -huh. that's the reason I think that 70% of the world is uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh -huh. Just to, uh, to, to, to close the, the story, Beside the 30 dunam that we planted, yeah. we planted another, the 30 parcels, 15 dunam. We planted another 12 dunam, what we call the communal vineyard, communal Lanvan vineyard. There we have three types of white, Chenin Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc, and Chardonnay, mm -hmm. and three types of red, uh, uh, Cabernet Franc, Petit Syrah, and Merlot. And why did we plant that? Yeah. In order to give, again, the best service that we can. So number one is for, it's for the blends, mm -hmm. in order for people to make different wines. And number two is uh, uh, um, for you to every year make a different wine. And number two, it was in order, if there's a year of, uh, of uh, low yield, yeah. that's number three already, low yield, uh, you're going to have a backup of the uh -huh. 12 dunam that we planted. Yeah. So, what is it, so, so what is it at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. Being a member in Anava Vineyards, is 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 being is being in agriculture in Israel, mm -hmm. being in agriculture in Eretz Israel, and working the land. But you don't have to work it by yourself. Mm -hmm. We are working it for you, mm -hmm. and you are literally a part of it. And it's not, and, and and you are literally a part of all of the 100 dunam which you have today. Next year already 120 dunam of Anava vineyards. You're part of this whole thing. Um, you have a home in agriculture in Israel, meaning. Like we're sitting here now, this is yeah. this is a place for the for the members to come and 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 enjoy this and and to feel it. Yeah. And then from your half a dunam, and that's the end of the of the uh, chain, mm -hmm. you're making your own wine, mm -hmm. right? So from every half a dunam, we're going to produce in Anava Vineyard Winery, which we are build, We started the uh, planning now. We're going to build it hopefully in two years when we're going to start our first harvest. So you offer, we, we talked about the vineyard as a service, the, the right. VAAS, the vineyard as a service. So people, this membership, so that entails, is that a annual membership? Correct. How, and are there other offerings in that? Can people purchase little plots or is it just the membership basis? And you also, throwing another question in, you also mentioned in a couple of years, you'll start releasing on a Vazone products. Correct. Okay. So first of all, uh, that's a great question about the... Uh, members and are there different uh, ways to be a member? Yeah, we are working on that. Mm -hmm. This is a, 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 a totally new concept. Uh -huh. There isn't anything like this in Israel, but that's why we are evolving. Mm -hmm. And anybody who joins is like, for me, is like, a, he's like a like a seed investor in a startup. Basically, like a family, a club, a community. Give all those words of people who who love Israel, love wine, and want to be part of the agriculture, Israel, nature scene here. Yeah. in the Judean hills, which we have to talk about that because that's what's also very exciting sure. for me. And, and this group, basically, they're all going to have right now, any member has a half a dunam of a vineyard of his own mm -hmm. with a sign of his own. And that's his vineyard, very clear where it starts, where it ends. Yeah. Uh, like you have a garden behind your house, mm -hmm. so you have a, a, a vineyard in Israel. That's yours. <laughs> and that vineyard produces for you a yeah. barrel a year uh -huh. from year 26 after three years of Ola. Mm -hmm. In year 26, we're are going to be in our first harvest, and we're going to make your wine um, together with you. Uh, Eyal Dori, our winemaker, once mentioned to me that he will not take, will, will not make wine for someone without talking to him, without understanding what he likes, what he wants. Oh, wow. It's very important for him, and that's why I love the fact that that uh, Eyal is with us because he's very, very you know part of our story, connecting and sharing getting to know the person, to produce wine for him. Um, 
that's every year you, you, you're, you're, you're producing a different wine. Hmm. Every parcel gives you 300, up to 300 bottles, uh, which is a barrel. Okay. Uh, and then imagine this, you are a part of a club. There are, we're, we are a special, very unique winery that, are, that is making uh, uh, at least 30 different wines, right? Every uh, person yeah. is making his own barrel. So 30 different wines of the highest quality mm -hmm. um, and then another let's say four to five maybe even more labels of anava vineyards that's what you asked before we're going to make our own wine so the first products come out in 2026 correct okay and then so are you when you start all this in two years this will be you're you're going to be pressing you're going to be creating the wines correct. and all those we're, things we're like and, a, and then they ha they receive these already bottled the bottles with their labels uh -huh. of course that's yeah. also part of it uh-huh the you know there's a concept i'm sure you're familiar with called farm to table mm -hmm. right <clears throat> so farm to table is you know if we're talking about a cucumber you yeah. know where it grows you know yeah. the farmer yeah it's amazing i think it's an amazing concept of yeah. being yeah, some, connected being right? connected some, yeah. someone once uh, i heard a lecture of some uh, uh um uh, i don't know was a farmer or 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 or, uh, or education probably both yeah he said he asked the kids in in, in kindergarten mm -hmm. where does a cucumber grow <laughs> the what store. Say? In the store. That's all right. So farm to table brings us, you know, closer to nature, closer yeah. to the source. Yeah. And uh, I'll add here, I don't know sure. if for for record or not, closer to God at the end, because you're going closer to the source of everything. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, <laughs> um, so so farm to table in in wine, I think it's 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 a whole new level, because in wine, as I'm sure you know, it's all about. The story is so much part of the wine, right? Mm -hmm. The cucumber, the story of the farmer is interesting. It's important. Yeah. But where the cucumber came from and what is the story of the farmer, it's, you, you, when you buy a cucumber in the store, you don't see the story. You don't see where, where it is from and what's the story of the farmer. Yeah. In wine, any bottle you take, yeah. you know, there's, a, there's, there's, there's Sukim here from the Tanakh and it says it. where it is from and it says what's the story. Yeah. So with wine, it's, it's much more the story. So uh -huh. here, Farm to table and wine, or, or like Adam calls it, uh, vine to wine. At the end of the day, you're sitting in your house and you're having a bottle of your wine, your story is in the bottle. Yeah. So for me, that's uh, very, very exciting. So the uniqueness here of being a member in the Anava Vineyards mm -hmm. is, is, is having a wine that is you, having mm -hmm. a wine that is from your vineyard, that you have probably been there a few times. And hopefully many times. We don't want this only to be You pay some money and later on you get, you get your, your wine. Bottles. No, yeah. you are you are you are involved in in, in uh, it's called an impact investment. That's the I know from oh, my really? previous from my previous world of, <laughs> yeah. of, of, of family office, yeah. there's a whole concept of impact investment, meaning you are investing yeah. in something that causes an, a, a larger impact. Mm. So so here it's an impact of 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 Yeshua Aretz, Chizuk Eretz Israel, Avat Israel, and and with this all all of the education. Hey there, I want to break in yet again. Although I ask for support in financial ways because it does cost some money to make the hosting happen and other aspects of Jewish drinking happen. So your financial support is definitely appreciated. And don't forget, you can go to jewishdrinking.com slash donate. But also. Another way of supporting the show and everything that Jewish Drinking does is also to tell your friends, tell your neighbors. If you like this content, if you like this show, maybe people you know also like it. So feel free to let them know, hey, I have this interesting episode I heard or a few episodes or whatever it is, or even a few clips. Feel free to share with your friends. All right. Thank you so much. Now back into the show. The terroir, the, the location where you are. So how, how did well? How did you decide here, and also what are you expecting as far as the impact on the grapes, and obviously more importantly for our purposes, the resulting impact on the wine. So the terroir, I see it in two levels. Yeah. Number one, you know, historical, spiritual level. Number two is really geographical, ecological, uh, uh, clean. How do you say clean? Climate. Uh, climate. Mm -hmm. Climate. Historically talking, speaking, we are sitting now in the Judean hills, mm -hmm. which are called, and I ask the groups this all the time. Why is this called the Judean? area, Matei Yehuda, yeah. right? Because this is the Judah's, the tribe mm -hmm. Judah's area. Yeah. And what was the bracha that and, Yaakov gave yeah. to yeah. Judah? 
It was about everything being wine stained. Everything wine. There was wine, him, wine, wine. He says to him, Osri la gefen iro. Yeah. Vela soreka beni atono. Kibes bayain suto. Yeah. Chachlili einai miyain. Yeah. I just, you know, took yeah, out everything everywhere. I was talking about. Like wine. Wine right, right. <laughs> he's talking about, you know, him being a lion and a leader also. Uh-huh, yeah. but, uh, but he's telling him your area, Matei Yehuda, yeah. is going to be flowing with wine. Yeah. So uh, right above here on the mountain, which this is a special uh, forest right here, yeah. there's a wine press. Yeah. Um, From probably 1,500 or 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And how do, we, how do we know that? Again, this is what I tell the groups. The, the, the rulers of the land since we've left in the year 600 when the Byzantine came were, were before, after the Byzantine. No, after were, the Byzantine. After the Byzantine. Were the Muslims. Yeah. And the Muslims are not allowed alcohol. Right. So there weren't any vineyards all around. Yeah. So the wine press up here was my grandfather's 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 ancestors at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. Definitely. And that's what I feel also when I walk around here. Mm. So that is about the area. In any hill all around us, where I live in the Husha, there are four wine presses. Like four ancient. Ancient wine yeah. presses. 4, 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Up here there's one. And when I tell the roots, I said, this isn't surprising. Because every hill all around us has between two to four wine presses. If there's a wine press, what does it mean that was also there? A vineyard. Right. That's what the same was here, for. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So this terroir, historically speaking, yeah. spiritually speaking, biblically years. speaking, Maybe not so much for the last uh, 1,400 years, but before that, for hundreds if not thousands of years prior, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. No, there was, you know, there was... It was the enforced there was not a break. using of it. Right? There, there, there was, was a break, break when right. the Muslims came. Right. That wind and air is coming from the sea up to here, which is mainly from Kiryat Gat, is almost flat to the sea. What a name. And what? It's wine presses and then it's saying. It's right, exactly. <laughs> exactly, Kiryat Gat, correct. Yeah, yeah. And then it comes to here, and when it comes here, it all goes in together, all the cold air coming from the sea, uh-huh. and going up to Hebron through this route. Uh-huh. And if you drive this road up to Hebron, yeah. it's like you're going through you know, two walls on your sides. Because you're it's going on the road. It's a wind tunnel. It's a wind tunnel, yeah. exactly. You're going on the road, and there's hills all around you. Mm. There's, and you're going up and up, but still the hills are, are above you. Mm. And we are in the foothills. The hills yeah. of Hebron are up there. But we are, you know, one level uh, underneath. So what happens is, as far as, you know, the weather, yeah. wind is going up during the day. Yeah. And during the night, ah, it so comes it cools. down. It cools down. So it cools and the, the cool air comes down. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the cool air comes down. Yeah. Um, so we have what the grapes need here. It's hot during the day. Uh-huh. And it's much colder during the night. The land is very, very welcoming. And we have nutrients. And we've done here different uh, tests in the land. Um, and you know, and, and another, just maybe the last thing about yeah. this area is we are in the Judean foothills, in the Judean area, which yeah. is the first Appalachian area, geographical area in Israel. So that's where we are as far as the terroir. Cool. Uh, I think that terroir is, is not only, you know, the land. It's, not, it's also the air. It's everything. It's also yeah. the people. So uh, we, we, we <laughs> that's go. a new one. I've never heard that before. That's a new one. It's hard to ignore. We are now in August 2024. It has been less than 10 months since 10 7 since the attacks. And, you know, la- I, I, I've been speaking, you know, hearing from vintners, last harvest was interrupted by the attacks. And we're on the obviously cusp of a new harvest. But I know that even just in emailing last fall with the vineyard, we, I, talking with Ruch Haley, we wanted to see if we could do Zoom. And it was not hot, it was not possible because the guys were off in me, serving Miluim in the reserve. So, how has ten seven affected the operations of the vineyards and, and the wines? Let's, and it's not even been a full year, even. Un- unbelievable times, unbelievable. I just wanted to to, yeah. to, to acknowledge that that the fact that we are sitting now here, Is that Yeshayahu? I think so. Uh huh. And uh, 40 kilometers from here, mm-hmm. our brothers and sisters are in hell, mm-hmm. are in complete darkness. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that, that is uh, with me all the time, all the time. Uh, what happened with the vineyard? I was, you know, it's summer, I'm out, and who's going to take care of the vineyard? Baruch mm-hmm. Hashem, there was a, a, a guy, a young guy that was about to be enlisted mm-hmm. by the name of Ashneo, and he worked with me in the summer. 
the Swiss guy, he is a uh, 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 Boger alumni, I think. He finished there. He finished also a, a year of learning before army. And in the summer, he came to work with me. In the summer before Simchat Torah. 2023. He came to work with me. He was working here. He's amazing. He's amazing. We love One him. One day you embrace your age. He was, he was okay. at my house for Shabbos. Okay. Uh, he comes to us almost every Shabbos. He's out of the army. Anyways, he call, I called him to take care of the vineyard. I'm in the army. Yeah. And he tells me, you know, like everybody, we were all, you know, crazy. He says, I got to go volunteer. I got to go somewhere. I told him, Schnell, <laughs> the best thing you could do is keep an eye on the vineyard. Yeah. And it took him a while and he understood. Took it with two of his hands. I'm telling you, I want to hug him now. He's, he's, he's just an amazing kid. Wow. And then December, I got out yeah. and he went in. Wow. So, Akadosh Baruch Hu is taking care of me all the time. That's wonderful. He, he enlisted to regular army, not uh, reserve. I was in reserve, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he went into regular army. He's now in a special unit mm. uh, um, called Lothar, Lohamat Teror, you know. Uh, uh, terror fighters. Terror fighters. He's yeah. in a special unit. Yeah, terror, yeah. And uh, he was at my house for Shabbos, That's and cool. he's an amazing kid. I came back. I was walking around the vineyard, literally depressed. How can I not be depressed? Uh, my, my friends are fighting all enlisted all in the war and i'm here it was very very hard for me what helped me and what enlisted my spirit were, were actually groups from the states mainly from the states mm. that came to help wow and that's what i tell the groups all the time today when they come i told you i have taglit and my that yeah. come here yeah. i tell them it isn't the your help isn't the 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 uh, uh you know the weeds that you're going to pull out uh -huh. That is helpful. It's more of the Very emotional much. support. The, the being fact here. that you're here, the energy that you're bringing, uh -huh. the you know the hug. Yeah. When you land, I tell I tell them that the minute you land in Ben Gurion, you're basically telling all of Am Israel, <laughs> we're here, yeah. we're with you, and that is much more than any agricultural work that you do. That's <laughs> in, in my opinion. Yeah. These groups that came, I was, I, I, you know. The thing I love the most, I, maybe you can see it now, is, is, is tell people about our story. Mm. And tell people how much it is amazing to love this land and to yeah. work the land. And then when people come, I suddenly saw that I was, you know, I was, I was going, rocking around, you know, like this. Yeah. I, I had no energy. Mm. And, and the meeting, meeting with them and telling them the, the story and telling them what I feel very openly... You know, lifted my spirit. And, and, and the last thing that happened yeah. that gave me strength, you know, as far as uh, the 7th of October was uh, actually in Pesach. Mm. We had an event here. We always have an event. Mm. Because what happens in Pesach? Hanitzanim uh, niru ba'aretz. Right? What's the nitzanim? It's the first buds. Oh. Right? Adam. Hanitzanim. A buds? What is it called when it, when it bursts open in, in the springtime? Blossom? Buds. 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 Yeah, buds. Yeah, yeah, buds. Yeah. So the first buds uh -huh. are in Pesach. So we celebrate that. Chag Emuna, right? It's, the emu, it's Chag Emuna. Why? Because you see the birth, the yeah. buds, and you know what's going to happen in the end, but you're already thankful for what you have. So that's what's special in Pesach, and that's the event we have. And then we had a group here who came. We, we, you know, we, we advertised for whoever wanted to come, and a group yeah. came. It was very, it was very, we were very happy because usually... Right now, on Avaya's new, so only friends and family come. But this was <laughs> out of the friend and family uh, circles. Yeah. And they came, and uh, there was a woman there who, I don't remember her name, but she told me a Dvar Torah, which was amazing for me. She said, you know, it says, when, when Am Yisrael goes to war, right, before they go to war, the Kohen comes and says, who doesn't go to war? Who doesn't go to war? Right, a first really. married, right? Yeah. Right? I don't remember all of them. First married? It's married, it's house, and it's you haven't done you haven't done halal on your vineyard. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. As as it's also, fakhed, it's also someone who's no, that, that's the fourth yeah, one. And it's very separate. Right, but the first three are the first three yeah, is bite. Yeah. Right. Bite each right. Right. Yeah. Like you said, right? Yeah. And she said, Why is that? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Which yeah. we started now. We're, start, we're starting yeah, yeah, yeah. next week. Yeah, yeah. And she said, why is that? Why, why does someone who plants the vineyard, he doesn't go to the war? Why? So she said to me, 
Because it seems out of place. Isha, it's totally understandable. We all know. That's, right, some bites. We, we know. Well, sure. Right. <laughs> and the bites, sure. But the karam, lama, It's karam. your business. Yeah, why, do have, why the vineyard? So she said because they have to know what they're fighting for. Wow. When, a, when somebody goes to war, and then one of the soldiers there says, hold on, I just planted a vineyard. I got to go home. <laughs> so his friend says, okay, good. <laughs> Go take care of your vineyard. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go. For, I'm gonna go take care of the bad, and you have to. And you have to add light. To take care of the land, because what are we fighting for? Uh -huh. You know, it's it's basically uh, the, the other side of the coin, yeah. right? Sumera uh -huh. is is to get rid of Hamas. Sumera uh -huh. is to get uh -huh. rid of well, anybody. A set well, of well, you gotta take care of the land, uh -huh. and there's nothing. And the highest agriculture of the land, especially in the Judean hills, like we said before. To you. Is the vineyard. So before we wrap up, Nadav, this has been very insightful, very interesting. Is there anything you would like to promote? We want to create uh, a community, a family, a group of people who love wine, who love Eretz Israel, and and who believe that we can uh, create an impact here mm. uh, in Anava Vineyards. And we uh, uh, really uh, invite anybody who who. Uh, 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 who feels the same to join us? Basically, at the bottom, you know, the bottom, the bottom, uh, the bottom of everything I'm going to promote is come have your own vineyard together with us. Mm -hmm. uh, get your wine every year together with all the other wines that we're going to make here, uh, and be part of Yeshua Aretz, mm -hmm. uh, producing wine, uh, education the next, uh, educating the next generation. Yeah. in the love for the for the for the land all right well thank you so much wishing you hatzlacha on amen, all of this amen. and the vineyards that are hanging out behind us currently growing waiting to be harvested wow and with that to say l'chaim 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 thank you very much